Hello and welcome to the Talking Food with Bid Food podcast. I'm Joe Anglis and for this episode we'll be talking about Natasha's Law. Following the tragic passing of Natasha Ednan Laparouse, who suffered a fatal allergic reaction to a sandwich in 2016, Natasha's family have been campaigning for greater transparency surrounding labelling requirements. From October 2021, the outcome of their campaigning will come into force under Natasha's Law, which is a new food labelling legislation. The impending law will mean that businesses must label all foods prepackaged for direct sale with a full list of ingredients, including emphasised allergens to consumers. To co-host this rather complex episode with me, I'm delighted to be joined by Natalie Bance, who is leading our communications out to customers around the subject. Welcome to the podcast for the first time, Natalie. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me. No problem at all, Natalie. So could you give um, the audience a bit of a background on your role and what you've been working on to support our customers best prepare for the new legislation? Yeah, of course. So I'm the Senior PR and External Communications Manager here at BibFood. My role is basically above and beyond what it says on the tin to protect and maintain the reputation of the business and essentially act as BibFood's guardian of external content. It's a very fast paced role, but an incredibly rewarding one. In regards to Natasha's Law, I've been leading the communications plan, working closely alongside our experts to provide information and advice to our customers ahead of the changes. We've had some great success so far with our webinar series, which we partnered with UK Hospitality on. We're soon to be uploading our Making Sense of Natasha's Law Guide, which will be available on our website. And now this very exciting podcast with you all. That's great. Thank you, Natalie. And who will be talking to in this episode? So we'll be joined by Samantha Elliott, who is Bibby's Nutrition and Allergen Manager. I know you've had her on a few podcasts already. Um, And then we'll be joined by Jim Cathcart, who is Policy Director at UK Hospitality and specialises in issues and legislation relevant to the industry. Brilliant. Thank you, Natalie. So I won't delay us anymore. Let's bring in our guests. So our first guest joining us in this episode is Samantha Elliott. Welcome back to the podcast, Sam. Hi, thank you for having me on again. That's no problem at all. So if anyone hasn't heard our recent episode where you were a guest for the Trends episode on Wellness My Way, can you let our audience know a little bit about your role and your experience in the industry? So I'm the Nutrition and Allergens Manager at Bidfood um, and my role in relation to allergens um, is to disseminate changes in legislation and advise our business on the best approach um, and to support our customers on the transition um, and changes to legislation as well. That's great. Thank you, Sam. So moving on to the subject for this episode, how have you found the last few months preparing for Natasha's Law? I think busy would probably be the best word to describe the past few months. Um, We are doing so much in the run up to October to support our customers on the changes in this legislation. But I would also say it's been very insightful, um, understanding how diverse business operations can be and therefore seeing how our customers are responding to this change in legislation, dependent on their business model, what third party relations they may have and their collaborations and their internal expertise, um, what they may have and also their accessibility to equipment. So it's been really interesting to, um, to, to see how everybody's taken a different approach to this. Hi, Sam, Natalie here. So what have you found to be the biggest hurdles in preparing for the changes to legislation? I wouldn't necessarily call this a hurdle, but definitely our biggest priority as a wholesaler has been the management of supply chain information. The requirements for Natasha's law means that food operators at the end of the supply chain have to act in a sense like manufacturers by producing a similar label that has a full ingredients list declaration with emphasised allergens. However, food operators and wholesalers are not the owners of the product recipes, the manufacturers are. Um, And our focus has been to ensure this transmission of data from manufacturers is as robust as it can be. And we are doing everything that we can to support our customers to manage this change too. And it is very important when data isn't fixed it's live and always changing as at any point in time, manufacturers can change their recipes or the production sites that they're using 
all the raw materials that they are using. And all of this could cause the products, ingredients list and allergen information to change. And our customer base, like I've mentioned, is very diverse. So everyone will be managing this differently using different software or no software in some circumstances. So it's meant it's, it's very complex. Uh, this legislation is very complex. Uh, and so there is not one solution to manage this. So it's about how we're adapting and how we can best support the diversity in our customers. Sounds really interesting and very, very busy and challenging time for you. But of course, there must be some opportunities here too. What have you found those to be? I'd say collaboration across the supply chain has been really big. Uh, the sharing of best practice for all of the webinars and the guidance that has been produced in the past few years. And I'd say it's bringing the supply chain together in a way that it hasn't done before. There is more engagement. Systems are improving to meet this change and be more efficient as we'll have to work together to achieve this change in legislation. The onus is not just on one individual. Um, and we are in discussions with a lot of different businesses in the supply chain, whether they are suppliers, our customers, third party software providers who we either feed our product data to on a daily basis or are working to achieve this with them. Um, and we also have been engaging with printing solution providers, too. So there's been a lot of collaboration through this. So it's obviously been quite a turbulent time for the industry over the last few months, especially for operators. Uh, and Natasha's law is obviously going to impact a huge proportion of them and could cause more challenges too. I know that we've worked quite closely on elements of how we can help to prepare customers ahead of the rollout of Natasha's law, but what tools and support do Bidfood have on offer? So... Firstly, we have an allergen management working group in Bid Food uh, that meet on a regular basis to review our processes and work together to prepare for Natasha's Law. We've partaken in webinars such as UK Hospitality's one on Natasha's Law. We've been engaging with our suppliers and reminding them of their responsibilities uh, in sharing this product information with us. Um, and we're working with the third parties, like I say, on how to share product information, including the allergens and the ingredients list. Um, we, we have also um, got our allergen reports available from the advice centre that can provide customers with allergen information for all the products that they get from us. Um, and we have also been building Bid Food Direct My Recipes, our recipe analysis software solution to enable our customers to create recipes which pull together the allergen and nutrition information. Um, and soon we'll be releasing the next stage of my recipes where the ingredients list for a recipe is generated and downloadable to assist customers in making labels for Natasha's Law. And also by September, we'll have our change report available that will identify when there is a change in any product information, um, including the allergen status or product and the ingredients list. And that will be accessible to all our customers as well if they choose to have it. There's so much on offer. It's, it's great to see. So yes, definitely. in terms of um, the overall feeling within the industry um, towards this legislation change, I mean, we're only a few weeks away now. Do you feel customers like the overall kind of consensus is that they're feeling more prepared and more confident? It's been a tough year and a half, I'd say, for the hospitality sector. We know that a lot of employees have been put on furlough, at least earlier on in the pandemic, that would have been responsible for managing the change in legislation. And a lot of businesses have not had the same resources as they may have once had to deal with Natasha's Law. Um, so these are multiple different factors that make it even more challenging than what it may have been originally. But from speaking to many affected customers, you know that this is at the forefront of their attention and that they are working very hard to make sure that they are prepared for the start of October. Um, so there is a lot of determination, a lot of focus and a lot of effort being put into this, that's for sure. That's great. Do you have any other advice to offer operators ahead of October? Uh, yes. So I'd say speak to your local enforcement officers if you can. They will be the ones enforcing this legislation. And so it's important to know if you're meeting their expectations, that you've identified the products that are in scope of this legislation correctly, and that your label designs are meeting the requirements for, um, uh, for this legislation too. I would also say to definitely have trial days before October. There may be something that you've missed that a practice run will pick up. 
uh, and this will help you to understand the impact it has on your food service. So how fluid will your processes be uh, if you're also having to put labels onto certain products? Uh, do your staff feel equipped to make and manage the labels? And how are the changes, if there are any changes in product information, um, how are they actually being managed on site? Um, and if something goes wrong, like a printer being temperamental as technology can always do that, um, how will you be able to deal with this on site and what will your approach be? That's great. And that was some really useful advice there. So I just want to say thank you so much for joining us in this episode, Sam. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Next up, Natalie and I will be joined by Jim Cathcart from UK Hospitality. Welcome back. We're now joined by Jim Cathcart, who is the Policy Director at UK Hospitality. Hi, Jim. Thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you to uh, Bidfu for having on the uh, podcast today. No problem at all. Um, so can you start by giving the listeners a bit of an insight into yourself and what your role entails at UK Hospitality, please? Absolutely. So as Policy Director, I look after all of the uh, sort of policy development that affects the hospitality sector. So uh, in terms of new legislation, such as uh, um, the PPDS uh, piece we'll be talking about today, uh, but also more widely around um, other areas of food safety, copyright law, um, alcohol law, that side of things. Um, over the past 18 months, I've uh, been primarily dealing with uh, the various COVID rules and restrictions that we've all had to, to live under um, uh, as, as operators when we could open. Uh, so that's been developing Q&As and guidance for our members, which hopefully uh, was as helpful as possible to navigate the various uh, restrictions that we had to live under. I won't mention uh, things like scotch eggs in case it triggers any recurring nightmares for, for listeners. But hopefully as we're out of um, the bulk of that now, um, the focus uh, returns to those issues that never really went away, such as food safety and uh, upcoming legislation in that area. So that's sort of a, a brief overview of what I look after. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Natalie here. So obviously, we've worked closely on this for a number of months now and had the opportunity to collaborate on our webinar series around navigating Natasha's law, which, as I mentioned earlier, was hugely successful. But a few months on now, um, and a lot closer to when the legislation is coming into effect, what advice would you give operators who are still feeling concerned and unprepared for the change in legislation? Absolutely. Thank you, Natalie. Um, I think in terms of um, the, well, the environment, the operating environment that everybody's in, um, as Sam alluded to, um, you know, it's been massively challenging 18 months uh, for operators uh, with uh, yeah, the wealth of uh, sort of rules and restrictions often changing on a daily basis, um, as well as the wider impacts uh, pressing on businesses around um, rents, around um, employment issues, uh, staffing, all of the myriad different things uh, that, that businesses have had to sort of grapple with. And now we're sort of finally making uh, the start on that journey of getting getting back on our feet um, and, and getting the sector back up and going again, uh, turning, turning minds to new legislation such as the PPDS uh, changes incoming is, is always going to be challenging. And um, obviously there, there is a great range of support out there from, uh, from suppliers, obviously Bid Food, uh, Bid Food leading that. Um, and also from ourselves as a, as a trade association as well, and perhaps we'll come on to what we've been doing around that as well to get the message out to operators, um, as well as the Food Standards Agency themselves. Um, but I would say it is, um, if you haven't been looking at this, now is the time to do it um, with, with the changes incoming. Um, and um, if you are feeling un unsure or uncertain about it, I think um, a bit of cold comfort, but it's sort of you're not alone. I think there are lots of businesses out there, especially at the smaller ends, who may not have fully engaged with this yet. So it's, um, it's, it's our role at the moment to get that messaging, messaging out where we have it uh, and those definitions and questions and, and answers for, for um, operators um, as quickly as possible. So um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a complex piece of, um, piece of legislation that's coming in. Uh, there's a lot to get your head around, but we're trying to make the process as simple as possible. Yeah, it definitely does sound very challenging. So you touched on it a second ago, but what have UK Hospitality been doing to support the industry ahead of the changes? Thanks, Joe. So um, a number of things. And I think, obviously, with COVID dominating everything, quite rightly, um, this 
piece of legislation has its genesis a few years ago now, as, as we talked about at the start of the, um, of, the, of the podcast. And it's been through sort of various iterations, legislation has been laid pre-COVID on it, um, discussions had about what is, what, how this will actually work in practice. However, now we're coming to the sharp end. Um, and again, this is coming from, um, you know, the original legislation was potentially dealing with an issue. Well, the starting point was only an issue um, very much around almost sort of pre a specific type of pre-packaged food. Um, as we all know, the hospitality sector is massively diverse and that's a strength in terms of um, what it offers in terms of um, uh, food and drink to people and hundreds and, and hundreds of different business models out there and types of operation. And as the legislation sort of went through and now we're working through sort of the guidance to it, that scope opens up. So there's still a lot of questions we ourselves as a trade body are working through with uh, our members and food standards agency at the moment, just to define what is, you know, what is a PPDS food? What, how does a, you know, a, a product uh, packaged in a certain way, you know, if it's wrapped in cling film under a dome on a counter, does that come into it or not? So again, as we're getting closer to implementation date, there were still some key questions that we're trying to get clarity on. Um, and ahead of implementation coming in, because what we really want is uh, a consistent approach to some of these interpretations when it comes to scope and not different areas or different local authorities uh, sort of giving their own views on it that may not be consistent with either central advice or, or what actually the law is as well in our view. So it's about getting as many of those questions um, nailed down now and, and answers that sort of work operationally and within the law for hospitality so when businesses start, uh, you know, to implement this from day one, uh, there's some clarity around scope, but it is it is pretty challenging at the moment. Um, as as we've touched on, we've done a series of webinars with Bid Foods um, around this uh, with officials as well from the FSA to, to give uh, further insight and guidance. Um, and as UK hospitality, um, as we get um, new questions in from members, we relay them directly to the FSA to get those answers um, about different types of products um, where we can, and we'll be publishing those uh, in the sort of coming days and weeks um, on a rolling basis. Because as I say, I think in a similar way to some of the COVID uh, legislation was that we had to find our way through, that this is sort of new law, it's not happened before, so there's no precedence to look back on yet. So it's about getting those workable, sensible interpretations out to people as much as possible. So as a trade body, we're we're doing that at the moment for our for our members and also the wider wider sector. That's that's really interesting, Jim. And I think it's it would be good to hear from you. Obviously, you've mentioned there that there are still things that you're working through um, alongside the government um, on behalf of the industry. Is there a nervousness around the fact that there's still there's still some kind of stones that are yet to be unturned, and there's still some information that people are yet like kind of desperate to hear so that they know what to do ahead of October? I think certainly there is um, concern about some of these areas where the scope isn't quite yet defined or how do we do this or again that wider communication piece out to certainly smaller um, operators who may not be members of trade bodies who are not necessarily plugged into the FSA as, as, as many companies are and have information from the likes of UK hospitality in terms of what's happening so certainly there I think there's going to be um, an area to sort of look at and, and, and to get information out. I think with legislation like this, again, because it is completely new, because as I say, it sort of started from quite a discrete issue that government were attempting to deal with. And as we move into the, the wider breadth of the, the out of home and hospitality sector, all these different um, permutations and different ways of operating um, are sort of looked at under the sort of um, aegis of what was probably quite a narrow scope to start off with, as that scope widens, there are going to be, you know, areas where we don't have clarity yet. And as I say, we're pushing for as much clarity as we can at the moment, so operators and crucially local authorities as well um, can um, have a set of uh, parameters to work to from day one. I suspect um, there will be a number of cases as we move into this legislation um, actually being in effect as well that will throw up new areas which haven't even been looked at yet in the scope of the guide and so that's where it's key again where we come in as a trade body to give advice out to uh, members in the industry but also that dialogue with local authorities as well um, to ensure that where we're all finding our way through this in the coming months 
that we can come to practical workable solutions where they arise. And again, a light touch approach is, is undertaken, especially as we know, hospitality finding its way at the moment after uh, you know the biggest crisis we've ever faced. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that kind of segues me quite nicely into, in, into my final um, question. And that's more around the fact that there were talks at one point that because of the constant challenges that our industry has faced with Brexit, COVID-19, um, now a large number of staff shortages across hospitality, that the legislation may actually get pushed back. Is this no longer a possibility? And if not, why have government decided against delaying it? Yeah, obviously, this timing is 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 pretty terrible. Um, I mean, the the issue that we were facing with is, as I say, this has actually been in train for a number of years now. And actually, the legislation and the dates um, that the, of implementation were in place pre-COVID. At the start of the COVID crisis and throughout, uh, we as a trade body, as well as uh, companies, as well as other stakeholders in the sector, said to government, look, you know, look at what's happening here. This is something that needs to be needs to be delayed in terms of the implementation costs. Even in our view, even without COVID, the timescales were tight to throw this into the mix, but they wouldn't budge on it, um, unfortunately. Uh, and again, we continue um, on some of the other areas coming in affecting food policy. So it's a bit of an avalanche. So we've got PPDS coming in in a couple of um, couple of months' time. Um, we've got uh, calorie labelling on the table uh, for out of home um, or large out of home businesses coming in from April 2022, which again we're pushing for an extension to as well as some more advertising and social media potential changes coming in towards the end of 2022. So there's lots happening. And again, we I think with PPDS, the arguments were made, but for whatever reason, government decided, right, no, it's, it's already been in train. We're committed to it. It's happening, unfortunately. But for some of those other areas, we are pushing for that extension uh, for that, because again, that's just burdens and um, administrative uh, issues for operators who, frankly, you know, are just trying to get business back on back on its feet and survive in the moment because we're not out of this yet um i think for for for, for a while so so again yeah that was unfortunate we couldn't get uh, get uh, it changed i think that's not to say we didn't amend anything i think in terms of influencing the guidance to make sure the scope of it was as workable for business as possible we've been doing that and we've made a number of um uh, number of uh, positive movements there with, with the FSA engagement with Scotland as well, because I think that's something not to forget as well, that um, uh, Food Standards Scotland are again looking at this as well for Scotland. Uh, and again, we're engaging with them to ensure that whatever the approach is, it is consistent with England and operators uh, across the UK, because what we don't want is two slightly different systems, because we've seen how that works or doesn't. Um, with with some of the COVID stuff, for example. So again, getting that consistency is key. So I think at the moment the focus is is you know this is happening, but it's getting as workable as right as possible uh, at this stage. That's really interesting, and I think there's just so much information there to, to digest. Uh, so I just want to say thank you, Jim, for your time and for sharing your expertise on this really complex area. Absolute pleasure, and thank you for having me on. So that wraps up everything we were going to talk about in this episode on Natasha's Law. But before we close the episode, I just want to say a big thank you to Natalie Bantz for being a fantastic co-host in her first episode. So thank you, Natalie. Fantastic co-host. Should I put that on my LinkedIn profile? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for having me, Joe. No problem at all. So if you're looking for more information or support on Natasha's Law or anything else to do with uh, supporting your business to recover and thrive in the coming months, visit our website, bidfood.co.uk. We'll also have some links to find more information in the podcast summary. Also, if you've enjoyed the episode, please do rate and follow the podcast on whatever platform you listen to these on. But until next time, goodbye.